Mwami turagushima. Haleluya. Turagushima, turagushima Yesu, turagushima na musaraba. Turashima maraso amenye kugacu. Uyu mwanya ni wowe turamya. Uyu mwanya ni wowe dushira hejo.
We greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe the Lord God has kept you well. In all circumstances, we give you pray, we give praise to our God. And uh, our God is ever present in time of need. Men of us are not here in Rwanda, but so many countries are undergoing uh, very hard moments of lives. But it's always encouraging to us that the word of God has an answer to every point of our need. We are living in times when every one of us is discouraged. Everyone is discouraged and depressed. Uh, we feel fear possessing our lives. And we begin to doubt about the faithfulness of God. And we feel so lonely and despairing and almost losing hope in the world in the future to come. I mean everything that you've been doing, your businesses, your families. I mean, we are living in times when you begin to say, My God, this is the end of my life. And some say, oh, I don't know whether I wake up in the morning because you don't have hope for tomorrow. And you say, I wish I would be a dead person other than rising up in the morning to face tomorrow. And Friends, there are things in life that are very hard to explain. There are many things that we don't understand. We are living in times when different people try to explain to us of what is going on. We are living in times when people try to tell us, oh, these are the days, these are the things that are coming up. There are things that are very hard for us to explain and give answer to problems of our times. And many of us, maybe today, where we have prophets of our times, when they try to explain, I mean, the questions of life. 
muri iki gihe hari abantu benshi abahanuzi wa muri iki gihe bajyageza gusobanura ibibazo by'ubuzima cyangwa ibibazo umuntu yibaza ku buzima and they try to take advantage of us and take advantage of people to explain the issues of life hanyuma bakakoresha ibyo bihe kugira ngo bagerageze bashaka uburyo bo batubwira uko bumva ibibazo by'ubuzima this life is a mystery ariko ubuzima namayobera there are things we cannot explain hari ibintu tutazashobora gusobanura and we preachers uh, we are we don't explain the mysteries of life kandi twebwe abavuga ubutumwa ntago dusobanura ubwira ubw'ubuzima there are things that we don't understand hari ibintu byinshi tudasobanukiwe there are things that i have no power to explain to you because i'm not god hari ibintu byinshi nafite ubasha ko kugusobanura ko ntari imana i mean the bible says god is unchangeable god and uh, the things are never change only god can change we need to go ku imana ari imana idahinduka hari ibintu giye nasigiye asho guhindura ariko imana yo yonyine yahindura there are things that i can get out of my control only god can take control hari ibintu byinshi ntashobora kuba nafata umuntu kingombe ishobora ariko imana akaba ari bigenga ibifashe this is why we get the word of god to become an encouragement to us because god is the one who can explain who can explain what is what is life who can explain to us about the mysteries of life who cannot teach us how life is in our times imana niyo yonyine ishobora kudusobanurira ubwiru namayobera by'ubuzima ni nayo ishobora kuduha ubusobanuro bw'ibihe tubayemo because there are moments in life when we try to do things and we come to the end of our road and everything becomes stuck hari gihe kenshi mu buzima tujye tugerageza gushaka inzira z'ibibazo turimo hanyuma tukagera ahantu tukabona ni humura umhandu urangirira none tubahagarara and this is what god tries to explain to us kandi kindi kimana igerageza kudusobanurira at the end of our time at the end of our situation at the end of our limitations god has an answer iyo ibihe byacu byarangiye iyo ubushobozi bwacu bwarangiye iyo gusobanukirwa kwacu kwarangiye imana ibifite igisubizo god wants us not to get advantage of other people but only god has an answer to every situation of life imana ntagishaka ko dukoresha ibihe kugira ngo tujyane abandi uko dushaka ahubwo imana yo nyine ni ifite igisubizo kubibazo by'ubuzima through the scriptures when we started the scriptures we tried to identify ourselves with men and women who went two lives the kind of life that we are going through mu buzima tugerageza kureba muri bibiliya tugerageza kureba abagabo n'abagore baciye mu bihe bijya gusa nibyo ducamo people who do not did not control situation in their times abantu mu bihe byabo batari bashoboye kugenga ibihe byabo cyangwa ibibabaho people who lost control of the circumstances abantu bisanze nta kintu bashoboye gukora kubibakikuje men who came at the end of their lives and they gave hope and they trusted and and depended on god abantu bageze ahantu mu buzima wabona byabayobeye hanyuma bisunga imana men who cry to god and say yes i'm a human being but god come to my time and save me abantu bageze ahantu bakavuga ngo mana ndu umuntu byanyobe ngwino ntabare men who came into their loneliness in life abantu baje mu gihe babaga biyumva bari bonyine batawe nabantu men who doubted about god even in their times abantu bashidikanyije ku mana mu bihe byabo men who were despairing in the times though they believed in god but they found themselves in despair and asked god are you real are you with me abantu nubwo biseraga imana bageze ahantu bakagera mu bihe byo kwiheba ndetse no gushidikanya bakabaza imana se mana uriho uri kumwe nange it is human to be discouraged ni bisanzwe ku muntu gucika intege it is human to get depressed ni bisanzwe no kuba umva wakwiheba it is human to get doubt about god ni byo umuntu kumva yashidikanya imana ni bisanzwe but praise god has a word for us today ariko imana ishimwe yuko no musi dufite ijambo god is not it's not yet over yet ntabwo birarangira and that's the message that we have for you today kandi nibwo butumwa mbafitiye uno munsi this god just this week the past week icyumweru gishize when i was praying i said god what do you have for me to preach 
to you. What message do you have for your people to hear? Then the Spirit of God reminded me about the life of Elijah. The Bible says Elijah was a man like us. That is in James chapter 5 verse 17. These are the men that we admire. These are the men like Moses. We say, I want to be like Moses. Oh, I want to be like David, the man who, who is mighty in battle. Oh, I want to be the people who are so mighty in the eyes of God. And yet we forget that these were ordinary men and women of God. Yes, we can admire them. Yes, we can desire to be like them and walk like them and speak like them. And yet we forget that these were human beings like us. They were discouraged. They doubted God. And in fact, the Bible says in 1 Kings 19, So God took me to the life of Elijah. And God says, as it were in the times of Elijah, so it is in our times. God uses ordinary men for extraordinary things. God does not call the qualified, but he calls the people to be qualified for his mission and his purpose. You see, even the Bible says, and God called a man called Elijah from a place, the unknown place, to fulfill his purpose. And God picks Elijah in his own time. In the times of the nation of Israel, when they are turned away from God, to bring back the nation back to him. My friend, God is still raising up men and women in times of crisis to give hope where there is no hope. To encourage in the times of discouragement. To give hope to those that are depressed. To possess faith in the times of fear. In the times of Doubting God, God to raise men and women to so that men and women of God may their faith may rise again. That he may turn back the nations back to God in the times of our apostasy, apostasy, and the times of backsliding and doubting about the presence of God. Exactly, this is the time when people are losing their faith in their times. They are doubting about God or the promises. They are, they are doubting about the faithfulness of God. They are doubting about the power of the healing of God in our times of COVID. Like in the times of Elijah. They say, where is the God of Elijah? There is that cry of saying, where is the God of the New Testament? But there is hope in our times. God is not only raising up men and women to, to, to encourage his people, but he's sending his word to, to encourage the people again. So my friend, do not 
not lose hope. Do not lose your faith. As in the times of Elijah, God is also raising men and women of God that is raising men again to return to him. So the point of victory of Elijah. He destroyed the prophets of Baal. And the nation turned to God. And God was given praise. And the Bible says fire came from heaven consumed the altar and Elijah killed all the false prophets. And the Bible says all men and women of God during that time worshipped God. And everyone says our God reigns. Our God reigns. We are looking in times when there were people, men of God, women of God, children of God will declare despite what we go through and they say our God reigns. And so in the chapter 19 of 1 Kings when Elijah is enjoying the victories of God when all the prophets of Baal were killed and the nation back to God God. The unexpected happened to this man of God. At the mountain of victory, something happened. In the midst of comfort and rejoicing about the works of God, something happened. Suddenly, something the unexpected happened in the times of Elijah. Jezebel, Jezebel and Ahab. Nahab. These were kings who had turned away the nation of Israel to worship other gods. They say this man who has troubled us has killed all the prophets I have said to Jezebel. He's the one who killed all your prophets, Jezebel. On verse 1 he says, I have got home, he told Jezebel, everything Elijah had done. Nuko Ahabu atecheleza Ezebeli, ibjo eria ya kose bjose. Including the way I'd killed all the prophets of Baal. Kandi nuko itrishi jawa hanuzi bose ngota. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah. Ezebeli ahera koyo atuma inunga kure eria. May the God strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow, I've not killed you just as you killed them. And Jezebel came and confronted a man who confronted all the prophets of Baal and killed them. He says, if I don't kill you by tomorrow, then these gods should kill me back. The same Elijah. He was killed, who was killed the prophets. The Bible says, Elijah was afraid and afraid for his life. He went to Bethsheba town in Judah and he left his servant there. 
Then he went there alone in the wilderness traveling all day long. He sat down solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. He says his prayer was saying, I have heard enough, Lord, take my life from no better than my ancestors who have already died. And then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel tied him and told him, Get up and eat. Let me begin by saying some of the things that happen in the life of Elijah can also happen to us. Hey, Jezebel is saying, I will kill you. And Elijah who previously had demonstrated the victory and the faithfulness of God. Who had declared the awesome and the power of God. Who had said there is no God in Israel other than the God of, of, of Jehovah God. Something happens in return. Fear gripped the man who previously declared the victory. Here Yesterday we declared victory. Yesterday we declared the faithfulness of God. May I bring it in our context today? Yesterday of Elijah was victory at the mountain top. Everyone worshipped the God of Israel. Who everyone said there is no man like Elijah. Have you? Have people testified about the faithfulness of God? Have they seen the faithfulness of God in your life? Have they seen victories of God, the battles that God had fought in your life and won in your life and declare a testimony about the victorious power of God? Have they seen the but the unexpected strikes again, and in the you forget the victories of yesterday. Each one of us we experience the fears like Elijah. We are overwhelmed by the fears of our present. We are gripped with the fear of the future. We get fear of, 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 of your security in business. And we forget the victories of yesterday. Have you forgotten? gotten the victories and the faithfulness of God yesterday. This Elijah, the Bible says, he was a man like us. He experienced victory of yesterday and the following day Fear overwhelmed him. And the Bible says again, when he was running away from God, when he was running away from Jezebel, he had his servant because of fear over his life. The Bible says he left his servant there. He went there alone. Elijah experienced loneliness. 
Eliya yagize ibihe byo kuba wenyine kwiyumva ari wenyine there are moments when we get lonely and we tell our friends, our relatives, and we are held up with loneliness, Hari isolation. And somebody calls you back phone and says, how are you doing? And you say, I am fine. And you, deep inside your heart, you are so lonely. You switch off your phone. You switch off, you cut off your contacts. You are lonely. You are depressed. You are in despair. And the Bible says, and Elijah said, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. Do you feel in your life and you declare like Elijah and say, God, I have had enough. I have eaten enough, for God, take me. He was depressed. He was overwhelmed. Are you feeling overwhelmed with what you are going through? Do you feel depressed and you say, God, there is no hope over my life? You feel lonely in your world. And in the midst of that, God sent his angel and says, Elijah, Elijah, where, what are you doing? He had lost faith in God. He says, I am the only person that I'm a survivor. I am the only one. Others have done, uh, died. I am the only one. Lost faith in God. Who demonstrated his power at Mount Carmel. My friend, you are not alone. You might be there and say, God, I am the only one. I'm the only survivor. I am the only one. God says, No. What you are getting, going through. You are not the first one. Nor are you the last one. For we have a cloud of witnesses. That's why God says Elijah. You are lying to yourself. I have others, more prophets that have not worshipped Baal. My friend. You are not alone. When you are going through, others have gone through it. Elijah completely had a problem. He had, he had run and got weary. Do you feel tired? Do you feel depressed? I mean, Elijah ran, 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 physical fatigue. Mentally, he was saying, where is God? You doubt God in your mind. Physically, we are depressed. Spiritually, we doubt the faithfulness of God. God never gave up over Elijah. 
Even in, in his fears, God did not give him up. Even in his weaknesses of running away from Jezebel and, and Ahab, God never gave him up. And this is the message of today. God is never given to us. It's not over yet. Elijah said, I am over. It is over. My mission with God, it's over. To becoming a servant of the prophet of God, it's over. My assignment to God, it's over. My friend, you might be there and you are saying exactly like Elijah who is saying, it's over. Today's message, God is saying, it is not over yet. God is not over with you yet. God in the midst of the fear and doubt and depression of Elijah. God touches on the shoulders through his angel to Elijah and says, Elijah, what are you doing there? God attends to Elijah's needs of that time. God is never over with us, my friend. In my disparation, in my doubt, and in my depression and everything, there is God who never gives up for us. He will touch you again and revive you again. He was tired and saying he was physically he was exhausted. Don't say so Elijah rise again. Arise and eat and come continue the journey. My friend, my Christian brothers and sisters, don't give up the journey still on. Continue the fish with the vision of God he gave you. Hold on to the promises of God and be encouraged of God. And the Bible says of David, when he was completely abandoned by his friends. The Bible says encourage himself in God. And the Bible says God encouraged him and attended to his need. It is not yet over. God will meet every need over your life. God is did not even tell him it's over. He says, Elijah, arise. 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 And so God is also telling us that we need again to realize that our God is on our side. He says, arise again. Arise with your boldness. Arise, I'm still God. God renews him again. Elijah needed another touch again. God says, arise again. Let me tell you on verse 15. Before that, he went and hid himself in the rock. He heard the wind coming. There was an earthquake. And God's voice was not there. God was not in the flames of fire. God was not in the shaking. 
God came with his two voices. Elijah's fellowship and the change of the perspective of God changed. He thought God is going to reveal himself in thunder. He thought God is going to demonstrate himself through earthquake. He thought God is going to demonstrate and reveal himself in power. This time, God did not. Remember, previously God had revealed himself with fire. He thought, maybe he's going to show himself like yesterday. But God says no. Change. Change. Change the way you think about me. Understand? I'm God who never changes. But I'm a God that you need to understand me in another perspective. Christians, we need to understand God in our times such as this. In another perspective. And the Bible says, on verse 15, he says after all that, God says, it's time again. Listen to what he says. Then the Lord said, told him, go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. Yeah. Elijah Elia. had ran away from the mission. He had ran away from the people that God had called him. God says, Elijah, it's not yet over. Maybe God has called you to do something. Maybe there is a promise that God gave you. In the times of Elijah, God is saying, It's not yet over yet. Friends, it's not yet over over your life. God is not yet given up over you. His purpose and his mission over your life is not yet over. Do you feel discouraged like Elijah? Do you feel fear like Elijah? Do you feel lonely like Elijah? Do you feel that nobody understands your situation like Elijah? You feel like Elijah says, I'm the only survivor. No one understands this situation that I'm going through. You're living in your own world. Friend, God is saying to you, it's not over yet. I still have a plan for you. In the things that you cannot do, only God can. In the things that you don't know why things happen, only God knows. In the things that I don't understand why things happen, only God understands. In the things that you cannot and I cannot describe, only God can explain. Only Him. Our mission 
gahunda yacu cyangwa ubutumwa bwacu icyo tugomba gukora is to have faith in god nukwizera imana and you say yes lord ukabwira imana uti yego mwami yes lord yego mwami like elijah Yes Lord in my fears. Yego mwami nubwo ndi mukuru. Yes Lord in my fears. Yego mwami nubwo ndi mukuru. Yes Lord in in my almost giving up to the mission. Yes Lord. Yego mwami nubwo nayinge kubivamo yego mwami. And you say God I understand. Ukabwira Imana uti yego mwami ndabyumva. You are not over us. Agurarangiza yanange. Friend. Shutiange. God is not yet over with. Imana ntagirarangizanya nawe. Let us pray. Reka dusenge. Father in the name of Jesus. Data mu izina rya Yesu. It's not yet over. Elijah said it is over. But you said Elijah. You are wrong. I'm not yet finished with you. Speak to someone. Somebody will you gave dreams and visions. Some you gave them promises. They saw the faithfulness of you O oh God yesterday. Encourage them like an angel of God. And you say Elijah. Maybe you can call them by name. You are James, you are Peter, you are Mary, whatever name. Put there your name. As much as God says to Elijah, what are you doing here? Why are you discouraged? Why are you giving up? It's not yet over. Arise. Spirit of God. Move across the people that will hear this message. That you are not over with us. To rise in faith again. To trust the God of yesterday. That God is not yet given up of us. In Jesus name. May God bless you. God is not yet over with us. Don't give up. God bless you. Amen. Amen.